We love talking about music. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E dot net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Brittany Bree from The Voice. Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. I'm sitting here in an RV. That was my dog in the background. We're overlooking a lake, and she doesn't like people walking by the RV. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, I get it. Your name has a ring to it. Is it do you ever just sit that back and just practice saying your name? Because this is the way you want to be introduced when you, when you go into a performance at Madison Square Gardens. Absolutely. You know, the name Brittany Bree actually came from my middle name. My middle name is Brene. Now, you know, that's a, a different name my father gave me. Yeah. But um, I took the first of that name and my name, Brittany and Bree, and put it together, and it just rung bells to me. And I was like, I like that. So that's where the name Brittany Bree came from. How, I ran with it. How, how did how did your family respond to that? Because when when I switched my name to Arrow, uh, my family didn't uh, warm up to that very easily. They they were like, "What are you What are you doing, man?" Yes, um, absolutely. My family is like, "Who's Brittany Bree?" I know yeah, Brittany it. Black, but, yeah. you know, because my last name is Black. <laughs> um, who's Brittany Bree? And so you know, and they was like, "Brittany Bree." And even I had to kind of get used to it when people was like, "Brittany Bree," and I was like, "Who's that?" I was like, "Oh, that's me." <laughs> 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 and then when even when, on stage, I said my name, but well, you couldn't tell. I said my name, and then I was like, "Oh, I mean, uh, uh, Brittany Bree." <laughs> Be- becoming Brittany Bree is it not like also uh, acting and things like that? That you've got to come into that character, and you've got to you know, understand that 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 Brittany Bree does have a personality. Absolutely. Um, you you definitely. They would always say that about me on the show. I stepped into character. Um, and so I do, being an artist, it comes with the territory of, of, of stepping into that, that role and being that person. So, yeah, because I mean, your, your mind, body and soul have designed the path that Brittany Bree is supposed to be on. Now it's now it's OK. Let's go bring it to life. Right. Absolutely. So, when, and so I feel like I'm walking in my destiny being Brittany Bree. So then, uh, what happens when when you're in, let's say, the the battle rounds and stuff like that? And Brittany Black has got to talk with the the collaborating partner, or, or is it Brittany Bree that shows up? And the the you know you've got two personalities with 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 a collaborating partner. I think I'm the same all the way around. Okay. Um, it's when I talked. I'm the same person. Um, I was being ex. Um, um, I'm just, I don't know. I'm the same yeah. all the time. I'm always goofy. I'm always <laughs> cracking a joke. No matter what, no matter how serious it is, I'll crack a joke in and then I'll, I'll bounce right back. So maybe you could say that I do or I don't, but um, Brittany Bree is an artist and I'm just me. I don't know. I can't explain it. Well, I'm glad you said artist. I love you. That's that's not a word that, that that people tend to use anymore. You know, they you know they do the performance or they do the gig or things like that. But it's but but to call yourself an artist is a beautiful place. Absolutely, I have to call myself an artist because um, to step out of gospel into secular, that made me realize that I was an artist. Yeah. Because not everybody can sing every genre of music and kill it. And so it woke up something in me to know that, oh, man, because I never really sung secular music to know that I can do both. I don't just have to stay in one lane. And that's what makes an artist an artist. What what happened to you when you went from um, from you know gospel music to secular music? Because, I mean, we've all seen those movies where where family members were like going, well, really, Brittany, what, what, what's going on here? You know what? What's wrong with the gospel? <sighs> Nothing is wrong with the gospel. Um, what I think is sometimes there are um, situations or scenarios that we yeah. go through in life that um, secular caters to that gospel necessarily doesn't. I feel like in gospel, gospel doesn't talk about some of the everyday issues that we experience. And so we have to go to secular to get that yeah. sound and that feeling. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, that gospel is not necessarily presenting. 
And so I want to kind of be a bridge um, to that. Of course, I never stray away from gospel, but there are just some things that gospel music doesn't talk about, that secular talks about, you know, and uh, a love story or whatever the case is. Um, you don't have the opportunity to hear that in gospel. And so if I'm going through a breakup or um, whatever I'm going through, sometimes you can go to secular and find any song to accommodate your feelings. You were the first person to explain that to me like that. That what what a yes. beautiful thing you just said. It, it it just opens up the mind, the body, and the soul in, into really looking deeper into those lyrics. And it's not just a chorus that we're all going to be singing to. Right. Right. And so I want to be able to present um, music as an artist that that bridges the gap in gospel and secular music with uh, we would never talk about in gospel that is talked about in secular. Yeah. Maybe I could introduce that in a gospel way because like I said, um, when I was going through a breakup, of course I could listen to gospel music and get God and God can get me through and all that good stuff. But at the same time, secular music spoke some things that gospel would never speak and yep. say. And it's yep. kind of like, this is exactly how I feel. Listen to this secular song. And I couldn't get that through gospel. Yeah, You know, um, we put limitations on music and think, oh, um, but music came from God, I believe. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then and then a song that you perform on NBC's The Voice is somebody who also has gone on that journey, Aretha Franklin. What was that like to be able to bring that song to life? Oh, my gosh. It was um, at first when we first got the song, me and Samira, um, I think I had like two hours to learn it because I knew it, but I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I was freaking out and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is Aretha, Aretha Franklin. So what am I going to do? And so um, um, it was beautiful to put our own twist on it because I know In Vogue has their own. And so we're, we were able as artists to come up with our own sound and present it um, with giving them something he can feel. And it was just awesome to me. Some said they liked it. Some said they didn't like it. But I loved it. See, that's, you know, that, that's um, what I love about the show is that you guys get to break it down, break it down, break it down. But at the same time, you don't get to overdo it because you don't have time to over overproduce something. Right. Um, one thing that John told us, to is to stay and stick with the melody of the song because it was a popular song that everybody knew. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, to make it our own. So how do you do that? Stick with um, in the lines of what the originality is but still make it your own yeah that just goes back to say how much of an artist that you are when you can take the original version but still make it your own but still convey the message of this is this song this came from aretha do, do you have to do research a little bit on on you know the the sights and the sounds because it's it's like you know you, you you go in and you know you can't just sing the lyrics because then we'll we'll pick up on that in an instant but I mean to go in there and get the history of Aretha to mix it in with the you know what John is sharing with you and stuff like that and then then you've got to bring it together. Absolutely, I had to go look up some things and um, uh, study her a little more to understand um, myself as an artist. Yeah. Because she was an artist in her own right and she had her own style. Like I was telling someone else, I want to be able to open up my mouth and people say, I know this Britney Bree. She has a certain <laughs> sound. Yep. You know, that's Britney Bree. You know, even if they're not looking, but they're listening to say, that's Britney Bree. Just like if you were not looking but listening, you would say, that's Aretha Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're a very busy person away from that mic that microphone. I mean, you, 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 you got you got two jobs and, and, and you've got two babies. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, their grandmothers are a very big support and help to me Good. because I work so much. I work for um, Allstate as an assistant adjuster and FedEx ground packaging. And so um, it's very busy with Allstate. It's a 12 hour shift, no days off. Oh, my God. And so, but it's only seasonal. Um, like when there's a national catastrophe or a storm. Yeah. So I, I work a lot with that when there's storms and hurricanes and tornadoes and um, rainstorms, ice storms, whatever type of national catastrophe there is, we go in and we work. And when I'm not working there, I'm working for FedEx. So um, it could be a lot. 
Wow, I'm gonna, I got to get real serious with the with the Allstate thing. With when, when you, in other words, you go into when when people's lives are at their absolute worst, a girl of God goes in and brings peace to those people that need someone who's going to listen and to help them get back on their feet again. Absolutely, you have so many people calling in because their roof has caved in yep. or their house is not livable, and um, you have to take that time to be, um, like you said, a person's peace because um, they're, they've they lost their houses or they have to get them fixed and so on and so forth. So um, I do a lot of scheduling for uh, my adjusters to go out to wow. inspect the homes. But at the same time, I have to sit on the phone for hours and listen to people um, talk about um, their living situation and how they have to move from their house or buy a new house or get the whole house redone. So it can be trying, but um, to be, because I'm a people's person and I love people, to be able to talk to them and bring peace to a situation or reassure them that everything is gonna be all right is one thing that I love to do versus singing. I can do it in another way versus singing. And so that means a lot to me because I just love people and I sing with so much emotion and conviction. I wanna right. want them to feel that same emotion and conviction without me having a mic in my hand and me just being a people's person. Oh my God! I mean, it, it's it, and then you also work with FedEx, and it's like you got to tell me the secret. How does FedEx do it? How can they get it there to your house on time? Oh, I work in a warehouse, so I'm unloading the trucks and oh uh, working God. on the lines. Wow, I, I I gotta ask you a question on that part because they, they FedEx wanted to hire me uh, last year, and and they go, can you can you load a thousand packages onto the truck? And I went, I said, I don't know, I've never tried it before. I mean, I mean, did you? <laughs> how how do you load those? I mean, how do you answer a question like that if you've never done it? But yet at the same time, I mean, that company is major league. Oh, yeah. So um, there are different sides in FedEx. You can go to small packaging or you can go to the big packaging side. Right now they have me unloading tires and refrigerators oh and couches. <laughs> and, oh, some days I'm just like, FedEx, I can't do it today. You leave. <laughs> to me, it's like a workout, though. It's like you get paid to work out. Yep. That's all you do is go and throw boxes all day. And when you come out, uh, you've been sweating and you finally lost a couple of pounds too. So I just look at it as it's a it's a workout every day for me. You're so right about that because last September I because I was in the middle of a pandemic and I wanted to be with people, I took on a job at a grocery store. Nobody understands how physical working at a grocery store is. I've lost seventeen pounds. Right. Absolutely. It, it, and Every time I want to uh, lose weight, FedEx is the place to go. <laughs> so true. <laughs> and what do you do with all the body aches? Because I, every, every morning I wake up, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. It feels like that you've been ran over with <laughs> uh, a truck the next morning you wake up. You don't feel it till the next day, especially um, dealing with large packages. Um, only thing I can really do is take a, a, a hot bubble bath. Other than that, <laughs> and then your body kind of gets used to it after a certain time frame. <laughs> so when you when you create or you sit in a studio with Ed Sheeran, what what is that vibe about? Because everybody brings their story forward, but 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 the thing is, they're interested in your story, your su- success. Oh my gosh, I love the way he talks. He has a, uh, outside of singing, he has a beautiful accent. Mm-hmm. Um, he is, he's dope. He's just very chill and very relaxed and laid back. And what I like about him is he sees the areas of opportunity in a song for it to be fantastic. And he just, um, he, he's dope. I, I've seen him take some songs and he say, well, let's move this around. Let's, let's take this instrument out. Let's use this. Let's, you know, um, just only use piano here. He really listens to your voice and finds the best thing that works for your voice to make it be seen and shine through. That's what I like about him. Wow, wow. Now, is there a ritual that you do before you go out on that stage? Is there something that you do no matter what? You have to do it before you can go out there and share your vocals. Oh, yes, absolutely. Pray and talk to God. Um, That's the thing. Um, Even in my blind audition, before I went up 
to sing, I was like, okay, God, it's me and you. I was like, <laughs> you're going to have to show up because, you know, I feel like I'm really nothing without God. And um, if he didn't show up on that stage, I felt like I would just be singing and making noise. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I really think that it's through him that I move, live, and have my being. And without him, um, I would be nothing. And so I just really felt like, my spirit, his spirit was with with me and within me because, you know, there's a difference in just singing and what we would say, singing. Yeah. And so I believe that the singing part came from God because I can sing, <laughs> but with him I can sing. There you go. <laughs> you you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Brittany. Absolutely. I would definitely love to come back. Excellent. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. You have a wonderful day.